Hello developers, how are you doing today? Welcome to your channel Tapascript where you learn things conceptually and fundamentally. We are in the part two of Next.js hands-on project building. We are building a full stack online bookstore using Next.js app router. Sounds amazing, isn't it? In the last video, we have completed the design and in this video, we will start coding. <music> So our target today is to complete the home page, the landing page, and then create a sidebar or navigation bar, then create the book list page and the book details page. So the target is quite long and that's why this video is a bit longer. Now, how to take this video? I won't recommend you to take this at a stretch. If you want, you can, but my recommendation is to take it in slices. You watch like how to build the home page, then build the home page how to build the sidebar, then build the sidebar, and that's the way you go. You take adequate breaks and then you perform all the necessary things to build the stuff. One thing though, all as always, I keep giving task at the end of the video. So please follow that task. Whatever we target to build, I would have built 80% of that, but you have to still complete 20% of it. And that's how each of the parts of this hands-on building is going to be. I'm very happy to see that some of you already submitted the task of the previous video. That's amazing. Thank you guys. Thank you for doing that. So keep doing that. The more you practice with me, more you build with me, the faster you learn. Okay. So I'll also expect that you complete the task for this video as well. Before we get started, a humble request if you have not subscribed to this channel please subscribe because i put a lot of effort to teach you things fundamentally and very strong way let's get started here i have created an xs project and imported that into my visual studio code i'm running that project locally and you can see at the right side is running on localhost 3000 now if you're new to it and you are not aware like how to run an xs project after creating it it's covered in my earlier videos from this playlist so go ahead and check that out Okay, so whatever we see the right side screen in the, on my browser, that's something that we are not interested in at all. So it's time to do some cleanup. We know that the top level route, which runs on slash, it's basically right under the app folder and you have to go and dig it out in the paste.js file. We have learned this earlier. So I'm not interested in any of these pieces. Let me just clean it off. Yes, this looks much better. It's a blank page, but it shows that it's a home page. I just have a div in this component. Okay, so first thing first, what we're going to do is like we're going to first create the home page that we have designed last time. But before that, few things to clarify. I'll be using JavaScript. I won't be using TypeScript to build this uh, application. The primary reason being is like most of the developers are accustomed to JavaScript. And second thing is like my focus is on building this application with Next.js, showing like how the APIs are, how to integrate it with the backend system and how to style the app. So whether you are using JavaScript or TypeScript, it doesn't really matter. If you are a TypeScript lover like me, I like TypeScript a lot, you can start coding in TypeScript itself. So in that case, when you create the project, make sure that you select the TypeScript op option while creating the project. Whatever coding I'm doing in JavaScript, you can equally code in TypeScript. And we have already agreed that you won't be following me as it is, rather you will be improvising on top of what I teach. So you can always code things on your way, okay? So with that, let's get started with the home page. I hope you remember this diagram where we had a home page with a background image and a single button that takes us to the store. First, we'll be creating this particular page and it will be accessible on the slash route. So the current page.js file, whatever we have, we are going to code straight away over there. So for this entire application, I'll be using Tailwind CSS. Again, you are free to select any other CSS library or framework of your wish, but I like Tailwind because it's simple to me and all this responsiveness and all these factors are easy to take care of. So even if you don't know Tailwind CSS, I think you can just see like how it works and can pause this video and go to the Tailwind documentation, learn a little bit about the properties that I'm introducing to you and again, come back and try to tweak things. I think you will learn it faster. For the home page, we need a background image, isn't it? So all our images will be located into this public folder. And I like to segregate those images based on their type or based on the pages, whatever. So in this case, it is like home page. So I'll be creating a folder called home. And inside that, I'm going to 
paste a background image. So this background image is taken from internet. You can take any background image of your choice, give any name that you want to give. You are free to do that. So this is the image for me. The next thing is I'm going to the page.js file right under this app folder and I'm going to first bring this image inside. Now to do that, we have to import a couple of things. One, import the background image that you have just kept inside the public folder from the path and then import an image component from Next.js. Right after that, what we're going to do, we are going to use this image component to render this image as a background. So we need a src property. The src property will be pointing to this background image. Close this guy. We should have the image coming up. Yeah, image is coming up, but it's still not looking like a background image. Let's add an alt attribute for the accessibility purpose. We'll say it as background image, any text, meaningful text you can add. Right after that, we'll be adding something called fill, F-I-L-L, -L, fill. So if we add fill, you see this, the image is actually filling the entire page. It's looking like a background image right now, but still it is not very good. It's look like a little bit stretched. So for that, there are two things that we're going to add. One is like add a sizes property and in the sizes property, add as 100 vertical width and then you add a style. This is what is most important. In this style, we'll be adding an object fit property and we'll say that object fit is of type cover so you see now it's got added really well and it is really scaling it's like a real background image so this is super cool okay so next thing that we're going to do is like we want to make this image look like a little bit blurry and on top of that we'll have that button otherwise the button and the image will be merged so now we'll be taking advantage of tailwind tailwind has a super cool way of making image blur so for that we can just say blur and on blur, this is too much blur. We can say how much blur we want. We'll say a little bit of blur. So blur SM. Now it is little bit of blurry effect is there. So this is what is my background is. Now we, what we'll be doing is like, we'll be doing the remaining coding to bring that button on top of this page. But along with that, we also want to show the product name, maybe a product logo. So let's do that. First of all, the outer div that we have, let's put some style into it so that more element we add inside this div, it place correctly so we'll have class name so i'll put flex flex call so that column wise it will be arrange then a position as relative uh, justify the content and on the center and then do like items center and what you can also tell is like let's give a vertical height of 100 vh all right so this is what we have given as a top level structure and then below we'll be adding another div. Inside this div, we'll be adding two more div. The first div to show the product name and the second div where we'll be adding the link to, the, to go to the next page, okay? So here for, for now, let's add a paragraph tag and add our product name, okay? This is good. This is just for testing that whether this lit loop is appearing over here. Of course, it is not appearing because we need to do some more styling so that it appears. So what happened is like, this is actually there in the DOM, but it is there at the background of this cover image. We need to bring it in the front. So for that, we'll be adding a few classes over here. We'll give a Z index. So you're giving a Z10. You're seeing that the moment I gave Z10, the lit loop is over here. This is cool. This is good. But along with that, let me also add all other required property. For example, we can add a flex property. Sorry, we can add a flex property here. Again, a flex call. That's how we'll be arranging the things. We can do a justify center, item center, Z10 we have added. Let's give a background color, maybe PG purple 100 kind of stuff, a background color. So you see the background color is already coming. Or some more modification of the beautification that we can give. We can make this as say rounded corner. So you'll see that there is rounded corner. We can give a little bit of padding. So it's looking a little bit more beautiful. And then we can give uh, some width and height so that it is good. So we'll be giving a width of 2 by 5, which is like 40%. And then we'll be giving a height of maybe 25%. Yeah, a height of 25%. Okay, so this is good. Now, if, if you can see that this is already responsive, if I go there, you see this, how it is shrinking, how it is, you know, getting expanded. So it's already, exp already responsive. This is good. Now for this particular div, let's add some classes again so that it looks again 
a bit little bit more beautiful so what we can add there we'll be adding a flex because we want to bring a logo also along with the name so we'll be adding a flex uh, and we want to bring like logo and this particular name side by side so we don't have to do a flex call by default it is flex row and let's add a padding bottom of five let's add a margin bottom maybe at five we'll adjust it once the things are coming up let's give this text a little bit of bigger text for the text 5xl we can add and then let's make it like text purple 800 wow it's looking really good now before we add the logo let me finish the work for adding the link now we need a link for that we'll be importing import link from next.js and then add this link over here with the href property href equals to let's go to slash store we don't have the store route yet but let's assume it is there and then add a text take me to the so you see this is good this is happening okay this is link so it's showing me the hand cursor so it is like clickable item but we can add a few more style to it so let's add class name do some styling um maybe bg let's add a purple color over here bg purple let's do 700 text let's make it like white because then only it will be visible we can do rounded sm we can do some padding of it now it's looking a lot better you know than what it was before so i have a proper button looking and along with that i have the product name now we can also add a logo to it now we thought it's like instead of creating our own logo why don't we use some library that will give us a bunch of images and icon and we can actually use one of them so one library we'll be using throughout this application is called hero icons so how can you install that you just need to open one terminal so this is the terminal that i'm opening and say yarn add Add at hero icons slash react so if you do that yarn add at hero icons slash react or you can do like npm uh, install at hero icons slash react either way it works okay so after that press enter all right so it's got added now let me import one icon from that import i'll be importing a sparkle icon okay and then i'll be using this sparkle icon just with the product name sure but you don't see it right because we have to add some height and width to it all good so you see the sparkle icon over here and you have the product name then you have the button so our home page is ready which is responsive if i go and test the responsiveness it's pretty responsive it's looking good in all the cases so the home page is done one thing that i want to quickly show about this icon library so any icon that you need you can go to heroicons.com and from here you can actually map this name so i have the sparkle sparkle will be here uh, similarly if you need arrow long down you can just type the name arrow long down from hero icon slash react so this is a very handy one again you can use any other icons libraries like react icons or anything that's of your choice i like this one so i'm using this in our last video when you spoke about design we already defined the pages and routes isn't it so the home page is on slash we had the image and button that is done now the store page where the book list will be there is on slash store for book details we have slash store slash a dynamic id for track order it is slash store slash track hyphen order and this is the way it is so let us start creating this folder and start creating this route and pages so first thing is to create a folder inside the app and call it as store and inside this let us create a page.js file now in page.js file we are going to create a simple react component we call this react component as book list page a simple react component and having just a text with a div called book list so now if i go to the ui and from here if i click i land into this book list page this is great we already had the link to slash store now slash store is working similarly can you guys create all other routes except this dynamic route let's create track order communities about us under store so for that we have to create three folders under store one is about then track order and after that communities inside each of this we'll be creating a page.js file so that the page gets created for the route let's create a dummy about component this is our about component similarly let's create page.js file for communities and track order so we have one for communities and another for track order let us now go and try to access so under store if i do about i have about page if i do track order i have track order page if i do communities i have the communities page so that is great i have created all the page 
Now the only route left for us is this dynamic route. So let me explain what is dynamic route. In this case, we are saying store slash an ID. An ID basically a book ID. The book ID will be unique and it will be dynamic. So in the book list page on slash store, there will be a bunch of books there. Once you click on a book, you want to get the details of a particular book by its ID. For that, you have to create a dynamic route. Now to create a dynamic route, process is almost similar, but there is a small change. Create a folder inside store with the subscripts and inside subscript, write the parameter name whose value you want to get dynamically. So if you want to get it by ID, write ID. If you want to get by name, write name. If you want to get by a slug, write slug, whatever. The parameter that through which you want to get the dynamic value, you write that for us, it is ID. And inside that, create page.js file. And similarly, now we'll be creating one React component and we'll call it as book details page. This is our React component, which is like a book details page, again, having a div. Now let us go to the UI and after store, let's call it one, two, three, four. Of course, I'm getting into book details page. Now, instead of one, two, three, four, if I give four, five, six, seven, that also says book details page. Now, how am I going to differentiate between the previous value and this value? For that only, this dynamic ID will be very helpful. Okay, so this dynamic ID, we can get through a props called params. Inside params, we can have an ID that we can destructure. And if I do a console.log of this ID, now if I go and refresh, I'll be able to see this ID getting printed over here, 14567. Also, you can see it like getting refreshed over here, 14567, twice because it, it auto refresh. So this is how it is. Now, if I go and change this to some other ID, 1234, for example, if you see 1234, enter, book details page is fine. But now it is one, two, three, four, and I am also getting this one, two, three, four is getting logged. So now taking this ID, I can make an API call or database call to retrieve this particular book details and render it. One thing to point out over here, this console.log, you won't be able to see it in the browser's console. If you do F12, you won't be able to see this one, two, three, four coming here because I mentioned in my previous videos that by default, all the Next.js components are the server components. So as these are server components, the console.log for the server components won't be in your browser console. Rather, it will be on the server. In this case, the server is a local node server that I am running to bootstrap this app. That is where it is actually logging over here. If you don't want to see it over here, you want to see it on the runtime, you can also install an extension called Console Ninja. This is a very handy extension. You can install that. So in that case, runtime, you will be able to see the log. Sometimes it may be a bit annoying. You can turn it off, but it's very handy. That's how I find it. I hope this portion is clear to you. Do you recollect that most of the pages, except the home page, had something in common? Yes, that's the sidebar, right? All the pages like book list page, book details, payment, uh, communities, uh, all those pages had the sidebar in common. And we thought that as it is static across the pages, we will be placing that in the layout so that we don't have to repeat that in every pages. If you're new to layout and pages concept, I have a video already in this playlist. Go ahead and check that out so that you have the ground really, really strong before you start jumping into coding. So now we are going to create the layout and then going to create this sidebar. All right, so let's get started. Great. So everything under the store we'll share a common layout and in that layout we are going to place the sidebar so let me create a file call layout.js because that's how we will be defining our layout and let's create a simple react component called bookstore layout as our layout here goes our layout so we have a simple react component called bookstore layout you know from our previous videos that layout takes its children as a props this is nothing but the page that this layout will be using across. And then I have a couple of div that wrapped this particular page, right? And also we spoke about metadata in our earlier videos through which you can actually change the title and description from one layout to another layout. Here you can see this title called buy or rent books. If you go to home page, you won't see that. It still says create next next app because in the home page layout, which is over here, we have not changed it. If we change this one to something different, lit loop and we'll say an online bookstore, save this up. See, this is different. So lit loop, if I go to store, 
this is going to change to buy or rent books and the book list page and it is already actually impacting some of the things over here this particular using this particular layout that we have a couple of divs with a few styling to make sure that everything appears over here appears correctly okay so one thing is like we don't really don't have to go through every uh, tailwind styling while we are coding we, this code will be available to you so you can always check it out and another reason is like i want you to improvise on whatever the tailwind i am writing so that you also get accustomed with the tailwind css and you can actually try around things around you know around tailwind so okay this is good so we have a layout now now in layout what we said is like we want to create a sidebar so let's create a sidebar to create a sidebar i want to create a sidebar component now where do we keep the component in the last video we discussed that for component we don't want to create them under these pages right we want to create them in a separate folder altogether so for that we can create a folder called components or a folder called ui i'll be going with the folder name called ui inside ui i'll be creating a folder called sidebar and inside sidebar i am going to create a new component called sidebar.js and again i am going to create a simple react component again which is like my sidebar component here is a simple sidebar for now so let me go to our store layout and import the sidebar and add this sidebar over here before the children do we see we have a sidebar and beside that we have a book list page now the fun if i go to any other pages which is inside the book, book list page for example if i go to communities i'll have the side by sidebars shared if i go to store slash at dynamic id i will still have the side by bar shared right so this sidebar is shared across all the pages that are inside store route because on the store route level for this we have created a layout and we, we, we are sharing across all the pages inside all right so now it's time that we create the sidebar in, in a way that it is responsive and it has all the elements in the sidebar we'll have all the navigations through which we can navigate in the app let's closely look into our sidebar structure so the sidebar is having a logo at the top and then it has a bunch of navigation item and then it has a sign out link over here right so this is the structure sidebar has a logo navigation link and the sign out okay so keeping that in mind let us go to sidebar and start coding our sidebar let's create the structure first so here is a div inside this div we can have a link which is like our logo so first link is a logo because clicking on that logo we might want to come back to the store page again uh, from any other pages right so we can create a link over here uh, for the logo for that let us import link all right after importing the link we can have this link over here href to store because anytime we'll come back to the store we'll add all the styling and all at a later point of time so this is good we have added a store so we'll say uh, this is our kind of store now over here we want to add something like a logo right logo with the product name so that it looks better so if you see here i have given a logo the logo started appearing because this is the only thing that i've added to the sidebar now and it is also a link so if i go to any other page store and from there to store slash about and if i click on this logo i'll come back to the store you see book list page this is the fun right this is how you incrementally build things all right so we have a logo for now and then apart from the logo we need some navigation items right so we need some kind of navigation links and apart from the navigation links we need the sign out so we'll create a div inside this div we will have a nav items uh, maybe a nav link is the appropriate name nav links and then apart from nav links we also need a button which is like a sign out button i'll be creating a form for that and inside that form i'll be having a button and this button can be a sign out button right so we'll tell it like sign out for now okay sign out button very simple it is giving error because the nav links is something that we have not created so it means we should create nav links now so let's go ahead and inside ui sidebar because this is another component related to sidebar let's create a nav links.js file here let's create a simple component nav links okay and then export this we have a simple nav links component inside things we'll just worry about a little later then import this one okay nav links now it started working right 
So we have logo, we have nav links, we have sign out. We have logo, we have nav links, we have sign out. It's almost looking like at least structure wise the uh, mock up that we had made, right? Now I like to code like this. I like to build things like this because even my components are not having anything. The structure is in place. Now it is just a matter for me to start filling the gap, start filling it up, you know, one by one. So similarly, instead of just writing a uh, logo over here, what I can do inside this link, maybe to make it a little bit polish, I can create a div and I can have a component called logo. So this component I can reuse later point of time if it is required anywhere okay it will fail again because logo component is not there so inside this i'm going to go and create a logo.js file again it is going to be a very simple react component so i've created a very simple react component now going to nav links sorry going to sidebar i just need to import the logo that's it okay there is a typo so I just correct the typo you got it so you have logo nav links sign out everything from different components Okay, let's first go and fix the logo. So for logo, if you remember the home page, if I go to the home page, this is our logo, this sparkle icon. So we can use the same sparkle icon over here also. So we'll go to import. I've imported the sparkle icon now. And I can use the sparkle icon along with this text. So this text I can keep inside a paragraph. And I can use the sparkle icon here with a class name, of course. Otherwise, it will not appear. Last time we used, I think, W12 and H12, if I'm not wrong. So that's what we're going to use. And then we have a logo. Okay, so let's go to the store and sidebar. Great. So I have this and there is a logo as well. So instead of logo, now I can give the actual product name, right? We can give it as, so I have logo and lit look. They are not sitting properly. That's fine. We are going to make them sit. So for that, I need to use some layout over here. We all love flex. So again, this is something that I don't want to repeat writing every time and wasting here. You can always experiment it out. So you see that is already started sitting side by side, the logo and this one. Uh, we can add few more style to it. After that, this is a bit small. This paragraph is a bit small. So let's add some class here. Let's add a text size of 28 pixel. And it's bigger now. And we can add a margin things are good okay this is not in white color because the spelling mistake so now it is in white color so white color stuff we have so we have this logo beautiful logo we have isn't it um so it is it is really working now let's go back to the sidebar again okay so this is under a div we can add a few classes here to make it sit much more properly for example i can give it a width of 32 which is like yeah 8 rem so it looks little bigger okay so this is looking good our logo is fine now at the link level what we can do this white color is not so much readable right so we can add some classes in the link level maybe one definitely i want to add is as a background color bg and then of course give it a layout give it a height okay these are all we have the flex property okay uh maybe we'll make it as a bit rounded okay it's already rounded now so like this you can actually play around with many properties of tailwind so we can give some kind of padding also maybe yeah so now it's much better actually it's sitting really well the logo part is done the next thing that we want to worry about is the nav links so we'll go to the nav links we want to, to show like you know how can you create a navigation links which is like more dynamic in nature so let's create a nav links. One of the simplest way of dealing with nav links is first you can create the link structure. So we'll be create something called a links. I have books. The name is books, sale or lend, track order, community, settings about, admin, all the links I have. And then I have a bunch of icons also. These icons I need to import. So let's import those icons. Here you go. I have imported this icon. Okay. Now the next thing we can do in my JSX, I can just loop it, it through right loop through these links and kind of add them one by one so let's do it and the best way of looping is using map so we can do that if you see like what i have done here I, the links that whatever we had the links this links array i'm just mapping through the looping through this links array taking each of this link out taking each of this item out and then from that i can read the name href and icon 
So what I'm doing then, then I'm getting the icon as an icon component. I can add that icon component straight away with the class name. That's where it is appearing like this, all the icons. And then I'm using the link.name as a key because when you iterate, you need to pass it as a key. And then the HRDF I'm getting from the link and there are some basic Tailwind classes that I have added. So I'll go back to sidebar because I need to do some style around it so that the nav link actually sits well. Let me add a few Tailwind classes over here. So I've added a few Tailwind classes over here. And the moment I started adding it, you can see like things started changing. Things started changing a bit, right? So, but what I have added basically, nothing. I have added a flex layout, then did a flex of flex wrap, then did a gap up to justify center. These are all very normal flex layout. So if you are new to flex layout, I would suggest that you read about flex, you know, and then you will be able to understand some of this construct pretty well. So I've used the flex and then what happened if I just do this you see you see so when i am increasing the size of my screen the sidebar is at the left side and the content is the right side the moment i'm getting into a smaller screen i am getting my nav bar the sidebar becoming the top level nav bar and my content is at the bottom so this is how we want to see right in mobile in mobile if the sidebar is at the left side it will be very difficult for users to kind of browse it through for that we have done this one now this all this magic is done over here because we have this bunch of breakpoints if you see you see this one this md you know then you will find yeah if you find this md you know this breakpoint so if you see the definition of breakpoint just to spend a very quick time on tailwind we are saying that for the minimum width 768 pixel then only you apply this justify content space between otherwise you apply justify center right so this is how you you work with tailwind is pretty pretty helpful and pretty easy to understand so i would definitely suggest that you spend some time okay so here these things are kind of merging with it with each other so one thing that you can do coming to this link you can add a margin bottom of four and you can see this is now properly aligned right this is properly aligned and if you just increase this this is all cool all very good now only thing left in this sidebar is to work with the sign out button so let's work with the sign out button we have a form here and we are going to work it out inside that form we have a button and we have given the name called sign out so little bit of change that we are going to do here also we are going to bring one icon okay so again from our library the library that we use hero icon there is a good icon called arrow left rectangle icon so i am going to get that again you can get any icon of your choice and the same icon, I'm going to use it inside the button. I don't need this anymore. So you see that the icon has come here properly. Certain layouting concept over here, like flex, item center. So as and when you kind of start adding some of these styles and some of these rules, you should be able to see that very clearly. So you see that? Okay, I have added a bunch of styles over here. I have given is a flex layout, flex grow, and then item center, justify center, given a gap, again, given a background background color and make it as a kind of rounded MD so that border radius is applicable. So these are the things that you can play around. And again, the code is available with you is in the description of this video. You can always pull, you can take these styles, but instead of copying, I would suggest that you start mingling with this you start tweaking this then only it will be fun you can start using it but if you're stuck you have the code reference always to use so now let's say this i have this beautiful sidebar already there is very responsive in nature it is already there so great so sidebar is done the next thing that you're going to do is about this book list page and then the book details page all right so right now we have a sidebar and i can navigate i can go to book list page i can go to track order page all other pages are not implemented so i don't go there i can go to home back and then i can come back to the store okay so this is there now we have to build this book list page and for that we need some book data so let us get started creating some book data we'll be creating some fake data and then we'll be using that fake data to create the book list page and after that we'll be creating the details page all right i said that we'll be using some fake data so the fake data we need to keep somewhere for that let us create a new folder to keep our data and call it as lib and inside the lib data and inside the lib folder, let us create a new file called fake data 
okay to keep the fake data inside the app folder create a folder called lib like library as in and then create a new file called fake hyphen data dot js inside this fake hyphen data dot js we are going to create some data this data will have both the book information and the users who would have purchased or rented this book okay so let me get this details now all this thing are nothing but a simple json data so if you see like user data is a simple json data it has id name email image and then i have two users because there's a user array is having two user data similarly i also have a books data book is having title id description author cover uh, pages whether book is rented or not how many in the stock rental price so this is my uh, fake data at this point of time i'm not using any database at this point of time keeping it in the json and then accessing this json data using two methods called get all books and get book by id if i pass the id i am finding it inside the books array and getting this particular book and just exporting these two functions so that anywhere in my application i can use it now if you are following me if you are building things please check out the link in the description uh, i have given the source code link where you have this fake hyphen data.js file just pull the content of it create a fake hyphen data.js file and then paste the content over here because there is nothing to teach you it's very simple just a copy paste what is required now the next thing is like i am using few images i have a folder called users inside that there are some images then the books then there are some images so i have already discussed like you have a public folder so inside public folder i can start creating this folder like books and users and keep some images so let's do that here you go again i have copied a few book images and the user images again look into the description of the video you should get the link to get these books and the users images so create a folder under public folder and copy this so you have all the data now our fake data is ready it's time to start coding our book list page so for that what we have to do we have to go to store and then open the page.js this is our book list page let's code this all right so first let us get all the books for that we can import the get all books method from the fake data we have already created that so let us just import that so we have get all books great now I can call this method over here now this books array will have all my method you can quickly do a console.log and check whether you got all the books or not i am sure that we'll be getting the books here you go you have all the books all eight books you know listed over here good so now i can iterate through this books array and then you know list out all the books instead of doing this in the page itself i would recommend that we create a new component called book list and then pass this as a props now here is the difference i call as this is a page i call this as a book list page and the component as book list l i s t l i s t book list now i have to create the book list where exactly all the components should reside is should reside inside the ui folder so i'll go to the ui folder and then create a new folder called books because these are all books related component and inside that let me create a new file called booklist.js file this is gonna be again a simple you know uh, react component what it does basically it takes uh, props from its page iterate through and then create the book information okay so let's go ahead and do that here you go booklist takes books as a props then it maps it through iterate through and then it gets each of the book now here we can write the jsx to actually render all the book information instead of doing rendering over here let's make it more modular let's create one more component called book card okay so we call a book card and book card can take a key because we are iterating using the map we can say book dot id book has an id that's a unique id and again we can pass this props call book okay now what do we have to do we have to create book card let's create book card okay hope you are understanding the hierarchy that we are trying to create so we'll go ahead and create a new file bookcard.js again it's gonna be a simple javascript react component and this is where we will be taking each of the attribute of the book like cover image description all these items right so let's create this so this will be like bookcard taking book as a parameter because it's a props and here we will start coding our stuff and of course we have to do now 
let me just do this for our satisfaction that so far whatever we have coded it works if not we have to make sure that we fix it we are just printing book title okay so from the book list page we got all the books pass the props in the book list component we went to the book list component and okay we have not imported this here or bad so we have to import book list over here okay so now we can go to the book list component the book list component has book card similarly i have to import book card over here okay i have imported book card book card takes each of the book information one by one passing it to the card i go to the book card i just list down the book title okay so i have some courage to see the output like what exactly the okay so i have some courage to see the output let's see what the output looks like do you see this each of these are the book name right so we have the great gatsby murder alice the wonderland and war stuff so each of this book name that gets listed over here right so there are of course styling challenges we'll fix all those but we get the data that's the main important thing now the main thing left for the book list page is just to style this card style this list and that's it we are done with that right so let's do that let's complete that so most of our style will reside inside this book card because we'll be styling each of this card um so let's do this let's replace this div with this one which is having a better styling defined again it's a flex layout flex flex column item center given a kind of background color so you see now all this you know book name at least you are able to read at least you are able to make sense out of it now the next thing that you are going to do is you can bring an image and we know already what exactly the image means so you have to import the image tag and the data is already having a cover image right you can actually import that image so let's import that image mm -hmm. now our books are listed with the image and the name right now book has many other properties so this is where i will stop now the task comes for you the task is for you to complete all other details so that you can have this book having all other relevant details so look into the fake data.js file for a moment now you have this many data the title id and the cover image i have already utilized so you have author you have description you have pages you have is rented stock rent price all this information go ahead and utilize whatever the information you think makes more sense on this book card okay after that the second task is you know how to link to pages so you know like how to link this book card to the book details page right what is a book details page book details page is nothing but store slash one two three if this is an id it should go to the book details page so what we are going to quickly do is to link each of this card to the book details page and then you have to complete the look and feel of the book details page okay so let's do that quickly so we'll go to each of this book card and then we import the link okay and then we'll make this link around this okay and we'll close this beautiful we have this link and then in this link we will pass the href what will be the href href will be slash store slash the dynamic id what is the dynamic id the dynamic id is nothing but the book id all right and you have to put it inside the expression like this so it means if i now click on this book it's actually going to book details page but look into the url now the url is having this id correct and if i go to my console boom i have this id printed from the book details page so let's go to that particular page which is our dynamic route right that's how we create it is getting printed now you have this id and you also have a method in the fake data.js which call get book by id so can you call this get book by id method in this particular dynamic route you already get the id get the book out of it and then do your jsx part to re render the details of that book so there are two tasks for you in this video one task to complete this page this page is of course the style and dollar distorted but you have the data so complete each of this card with whatever the information you feel are relevant with that and then do the style so that they get placed properly and i have already linked this page to the details page the id is also passing details page is getting the id using that id get the 
book exact book details and then render the book details over here more meaningfully that you want okay now if you need help the entire code whatever we spoke so far is been committed and the link for that is in the description of this video but look for that code only when you are helpless and you are not able to proceed don't make the exact same thing that i have made over there or i have made so far with you do your own version and then share the screenshot share your uh, repository link on tapascript discord this is the discord link the discord link is also mentioned in the description of the video so build with me guys don't miss this opportunity the more you build with me the faster you learn and if you're stuck anywhere i'm there to help you the code is already there if you have any questions if you want to be innovative about it next day's channel on the tapascript server just go and post your stuff over there i'm looking forward to see you over there i hope it was great i hope you enjoyed building things with me but more important thing is you finish those tasks that i have given you and then post them on the discord channel so that i can review them and give you feedback i'm looking forward to it and again don't forget to subscribe in the next videos we'll be covering few more things which are very exciting one thing is about dealing with the data in the database so that's something we are going to do second is like we want to build the functionality of add to cart and while doing that there are two things that i'm going to show you one how to use the context api in nexus app router it's going to be outstanding second thing how to integrate a payment gateway like stripe or paypal or things like that so that we can simulate the actual payment checkout and finally after that we'll be building the authentication so we'll be learning how to handle tokens like access tokens refresh tokens all these things so everything is coming in lead loop for you to build things with me are you ready